We're live. Happy Mother Frickin' Friday, everyone. Happy afternoon. Happy pre weekend. Happy Friday. I hope you all had a fan frickin' tastic week. It's just a Coke Zero. It's not a brewski. Just a Coke Zero. But we got some peeps filing in. Hopefully, I'm not too loud. I moved the mic again. New placement, new location, location. Let me get a sip of this. Delish, delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm in a good mood because it's Friday. The weekend is upon us. I got some stuff here. If you saw the thumbnail, got some stuff here. Got some Motu Origins. Took a little... Took a little uh, dip, dip ski into the shallow end in that uh, line. I was going to pass on that line, but I decided just to take a little dip ski into that line. Just two figures so far, two figures. But I was going to pass because I was going to have my classics as my Motu line of choice. But I took a little, uh, little, 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 little frolic, frolic in the uh, the field. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to get at here. I uh, got a couple WWE Elite figures. Finally got this one. Holy frick. Seems like it's been out for a couple months now, but I finally got this WWE Elite figure that I've been waiting for for freaking ever from ringside. No fault to them. It's just the fact that I ordered it kind of stupidly. There's the notification. Hey, I'm live. So hopefully we'll get some more peeps coming in now that I got my own notification. Uh, but anyway... I ordered it stupidly. So if you order from ringside collectibles, I'm sure there's a lot of wrestling fans out there, a lot of wrestling toy collectors, action figure collectors out there right now watching this. If you order from them ringside and you order, and I hear a child coming up already. So we're going to have a visitor here soon. She must've gotten the notification too, that I was that dear old dad's live. She had a great first two days of school, went back to school on Thursday, but anyway, where the frick was I? ringside so if you if you, i ordered uh i'll just uh, uh, let's wait let's wait until i show you i mean if you saw the thumbnail you know what they are but i ordered a product that was supposed to be released in late ju uh, june and then i ordered another product that was supposed to be released in early august well when you order them together they ship them together so whatever comes out last they, they ship it when that comes out hey sweetie pie the dog's in the house I am realizing that I am yelling right into this mic right now. So hopefully I'm not blowing anyone's ears out that are watching this on their uh, earbuds. But uh, how was your first? By the way, mommy's getting Whataburger for dinner. Okay. Um, how was your first week, two days at school? Um, good. Good? I already made a new friend. She made a new friend. So that's awesome. She was worried because uh, she didn't have any uh, friends in her new class, but she made a new friend. So that's very, very cool. She likes her teachers, and uh, we're good to go there. Yeah, and my first time switching classes. First time switching classes. And even <laughs> today, I got pizza, and you were sleeping. I mean, pizza day, guys. If, if you go, if you um, um, live, um, live in Texas, you sure does attend, attend, uh, that's going and does eat a lot, and then does reading, and don't go to school only on Friday, and you can just eat the lunch on Friday. <laughs> exactly what she said. All right, so I got to do the roll call because I see a lot of people in here, a lot of comments in here. Uh, Night of Ren, I'm sorry I blew your ears out. I saw that last comment. I have a new mic location, as you can see right here. I do have my pop filter up, so that's 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 regulating my peas. Ew. But any no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so Night of Ren seven eight nine, what the frick is up? How's it going? First comment goes to Night of Ren. Ant Anderson's here. Air Extreme. How's it going, Jeremy? Uh, Pop stops here. How's it going, guys? Uh, Eric. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Mariah Elizabeth posted. Oh, there you go. You got something to watch. Mariah Elizabeth, the millionaire. Who? What does she do? She makes YouTube videos on squishies. She like paints squishy toys. Uh, Eric Stream 21. Nice. Coke is the best. Tony Robs here. Uh, CGT TV, AKA Cool Guy TV. What's up, Cincy? Any luck today? 
I didn't actually go on any hunts today. I was supposed to go run out to Target. I had a lot of stuff going on today. Holy cow. She just screamed. I had a lot of stuff going on today. Didn't go to Target. Didn't hit up the uh, the Targets um, for Joe's. Didn't uh, I didn't get out. I didn't get out. So hopefully you guys, if you went out today, uh, hopefully you found something. Hopefully you found something good. Jedi Howard 22 is here. Daniel Harrison, Knight of Ren uh, 789. Chris Mendiola. Yo, happy Friday, all. Uh, Richard Beaver, what you got? I got some stuff here. Kevin Vallejo. How's it going, Kevin? Willie Woodson, Roman Soares. Uh, Anderson said, uh, Eric Extreme says, those Mudos sold out quick. Mudo? Oh, Motu. Okay, I was like, great, Muda? Uh, Motu. They did sell out quick. Uh, Ant Anderson got my AEW figures from ringside and the boxes were destroyed. Thankfully, none damaged on the inside. That sucks, man. I actually got uh, a couple things from ringside today, which I'll show you in just a second. Tom Flurry's here. King Dingaling. One of my favorite handles on YouTube. Happy Friday. Uh, Night of Ren says, I got the Marvel Legends Retro Spidey yesterday at Target, and I have Cobra Trooper coming in Monday. Hell yes. All right. That is delicious, by the way. Michael G., first time seeing you live. Excited, finally. Michael G., thanks for joining live. I appreciate it. All right, so the comments jumped, so that tells me that I am uh, way behind. So I'm just going to start on this haul, and then I'm going to open some stuff, and then we're going to talk, we're going to chat. I'm going to look at the uh, the comments. Knight of Ren says, since you should paint squishy toys equals uh, a billion, I believe, if, if my eyes are correct and I'm, my counting skills are correct. Uh, not much out there in my area. See, Cool Guy TV says, Cherry Zero is my jam. I need to try that. That sounds good. Uh, Philly Montreal, Philly MTL. Is that Philly Montreal? Um, it's lit boy. Philly Montreal. Didn't, aren't they playing right now? Uh, Montreal was winning two, uh, three zip last time I checked. Eric stream 21. And since he, any suggestion on the Toka Rizar two pack giveaway I'm doing. Eric stream 21 is doing a Toka Rizar two pack giveaway. Um, I don't know. Let me think about, uh, some suggestions on how to, to do that. That's pretty awesome that you're doing that though. Very, very awesome. I'm going to show you what I got, though, and then I'll get back to the comments. I'm going to start with some kind of different stuff first, before the figures. Um, got, a, got a hockey card. I, uh, I, ha I do have a second channel, which I haven't done any content for since uh, the quarantine started. Uh, but I do plan on buying some hockey boxes very, very soon, as soon as I get some spending money to do so. But I bought a hockey card, so it's just one card. If you're not a hockey fan, this segment will last about five seconds. I got a uh, Christian Dvorak, which you can't even see because it's all freaking... There we go. Christian Dvorak, he's a center for the uh, Arizona Coyotes. I'm a big fan of the Coyotes, like their team. But uh, that's Devo right there, Christian Dvorak. He's the starting... He's the first-line center. Uh, so very, very cool there. Future watch card, that's his rookie and his autograph on there. Future Watch Devo. So I got that. That was like, I don't know, like 10 bucks. Super, super great deal. I got one of the uh, the baddest ass t-shirts I've ever seen in a long time. I saw this one advertised. Did I miss all the non-sports stuff already? I haven't even gotten to that, i.e. I'm just starting with the random stuff first, and then we're going to get into the toy stuff. But I got a t-shirt. So this is the last of the, the non-toy stuff. Looks like you're sitting in a cobra chair, Mister <laughs> Mister Bird. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look like that little cobra chair there, the red and black. Looks pretty badass. Um, so I'm gonna reveal this shirt because I freaking, I freaking love it. I showed Mrs. Cincy; she was not as impressed. I'll tell you who she thought it was at first, and then I had to correct her. And I was like, uh, "How did we uh, ever go on a second date if you didn't even know this?" But look at this. Look at this shirt. Holy frickin' frick right there. Predator, baby. Heat vision. Predator shirt. Arnold, get to the chopper. Do it now. Hurry, I'm right here. Kill me. Badass. Dutch. Mother frickin' Dutch. Heat vision shirt. I mean, it does it get any cooler than that, honestly? Is there a t-shirt out there right now that is better than this? I don't think there is. That's awesome. 
I could not tell you where I bought it. I saw it on the internet. I was like, is this a real company? Or are they just going to steal my credit card number? They might have stolen my credit card number. I don't know yet. But uh, I purchased the shirt. It got sent out. It got, they got lots of great reviews. So let me look at the... Uh, I mean, if you're legitimately interested in this shirt, let me look at the collar and see who it was from. So it's from... The collar says, and I think this is where I bought it, American AF. And it's... Uh, AAFnation.com is what it says. 100% cotton. I wear a size large. This is a large, large. So I'm assuming it's a little bit larger so that it can shrink a little bit. But uh, yeah, get to the t-shirt now. Hurry, it's right here. Do it now. <sighs> That's not the last t-shirt you're going to see on this one because I did get a loot crate. I'm going to leave that for a little bit later because a lot of people don't like their loot crates to be spoiled. But I, I got a, lot, a loot crate. I'm going to open this loot crate up. But I want to open, I want to show you the other stuff first so that if you want to not watch the loot crate portion, you can not watch the loot crate portion. But uh, I did pick up a couple of the Motu Legends, Motu Origins, not Legends, got Legends on the brain, Motu Origins figures. I saw these at my Walmart or a local Walmart and I got Skeletor and He-Man. I figure I was going to skip this line, but uh, I got it in hand. I looked at it. I got the feels. I got the nostalgia feels right there. The card, the art, the packaging, the presentation. I mean, look at the art. Look at the card art. Freaking awesome. I mean, it just looks so freaking good in hand. Uh, I mean, it's so freaking, it's like classic looking. Look at that. And for He-Man, awesome. These are $14.92 at Walmart. I think that they're exclusive to Walmart at least this year. And then next year, they're going to be available everywhere. But um, I decided to just get these two. I'm not sure. And since he narc just put up a video game on Tony Almeida said. So uh, I think Craig got the entire first wave. He got all the figures. He got the sky sled. He got the battle cat. He is all in. But uh, I would just want to dip my toes in the shallow end on this. And uh, I got these two. I'm not sure if I'm going to get more. It kind of, I don't know. Daddy. It's going to be a game time decision. Yes, sweetie. <laughs> So when you do like this here, mm -hmm. um, when you're on the tail, this side of your face goes dark. Oh, it does? Yeah. Interesting, sweetheart. Yeah, because I <laughs> saw it on the video. Okay. Well, thank you for the feedback, producer, P-Dog. <laughs> can I will <laughs> let Will out, too? Let him out? Is he still in his cage? Yeah. You can let him out. Yeah! I forgot he was in there. Yeah. We had to put him in there because um, he... Uh, was acting up a little bit today. He was uh, being a little aggressive towards some visitors that were looking at our backyard project, which I will re reveal soon uh, in a video. But we're, we're doing a big backyard project. Uh, the doggo was being super aggressive, a little scary, uh, snarling, showing his teeth. So we had to put him in his little uh, crate, let him calm down a bit. I threw in his squeaky toy. He's calm, but I totally forgot to let him out. So Thank you, P-Dog, even though you can't hear me right now, for reminding me about the doggo. Uh, Art Gutierrez is here. How's it going, Art? Um, let's see. Apparently, there's a solid case of Skeletor, a solid case of He-Man, and a case of the rest. Since he's backyard project equals full-size Death Star. Uh, Tony Tangney says, uh, P-Dog, making sure the stream is running smooth. <laughs> she's, uh, she's graduated to executive producer level. Here comes the dog right now. Dog. Yeah, yeah. I said that you're making sure that the stream is running uh, correctly. Hey, dude. Hi. Let me let me, let me <laughs> get some of this, dude. Come here, dude. Come here. You want to see everyone? <laughs> oh, you were a bad boy today. You were being really mean to visitors that we had here. Lily's really, really white. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Look how white he is. There's the doggo. Hi. You all right, man? Oh yeah, even like even 
Oh my god. <laughs> you just, um, you mean my friends had, had your, his, his, well, his dad has a YouTube channel. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but I don't even know what his name. Oh, okay. Night of Rent says, wait a minute, that hammer back there, is that for role play activities after hours? Bow chicka, wow, wow, just kidding. What, oh, what, wow. oh, the Harley Quinn hammer. Uh, so Mrs. Cincy actually made that for Halloween for, what, was Tay Tay Harley Quinn? Yeah, I was a unicorn. No, yeah. I was um, something, I don't know. Tay Tay was Harley Quinn one Halloween. And Are you ordering mm. Whataburger? It looks like you have Whataburger. I was looking at the menu, sweetie. Okay. All right, I got to do this unboxing, sweetie pie, so go watch Mariah Elizabeth. I already watched two videos. Okay. Check out some of her other videos then. Like, comment, and subscribe to her channel. Okay. Watch out, sweetie. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, where was I? So I got He-Man and Skeletor. Those are the only two I'm going to get for right now. Is I, that for me? I did really like the Sky Sled. I like the way it looked. I'm sky not sled? sure. I yeah. Can I have Sky Sled? Abso freaking lootly, girlfriend. Yeah. We'll get you a Sky Sled. Um, how is the dog feeling? I know he was feeling under the weather on the last stream. He's actually doing much, much better. Um, he, he had a bit of a bug and had a little bit of the, the runny runs, but he's doing great now. He's just acting a little protective of our household. He's, he's scary sometimes when we have someone, when someone rings the doorbell, he gets a little scary. Um, but yeah, lock that door. <laughs> Tony says, Bam, guys. So I got these from Ringside Collectibles. This is the one that I've been waiting for for such a long time for. It got released in... Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. Bam. Hey, I forgot to take my shoes off. I got to take my shoes off. Be comfortable here. Um, I've been waiting for the, uh, the Fiend for a long, long time. He got released in like early June. Uh, but I finally got the Fiend... He is one of my favorite things in the WWE right now. I love his character. Bray Wyatt is killing it right now. So finally got that one. There's the side. Look at that. Side art or side uh, art, I guess. That's not really art. It's a picture. There's the back. There's that right there. I'm probably going to unbox this during this stream. I'm planning on unboxing a few things here. This is the one that was released, uh, I guess, this week. This is the Edge Heads 3-pack Ringside Collectibles exclusive. It's got Edge. And it does look like they're using a new digital face scan for Edge. Because that one looks um, much better than the previous Rated R Superstar Edge. But there you go. It comes with the, uh, as they were previously known, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Before that, they were Brian and... What was his other name? They were the major brothers, Brian and Brian and Brett. Yeah. So uh, I think Ryder was Brett major and he was Brian major. I think that was their names when they were the major brothers, AKA the edge heads in the WWE. But I got that one right there. There's the side. There's the back edge Hawkins, Ryder, Myers, Cardona, Major, major wrestling podcast. <laughs> there they are right there. Pretty cool. So I got that. Brett Matthews. Um, and then Marvel Legends. This one was a gifto from this Mississippi Target Poichus right there. War Machine. Very, very cool. I like it a lot. I'm going to be unboxing this one. Wing Nut, I have not found an AEW Brandy yet. I believe that she is not available in the first wave that are hitting stores. I read something. I can't guarantee that it's 100% accurate, but I read that they're going to be redistributing or initially distributing Brandy with the next wave that hits the stores. But apparently this initial wave didn't get any Brandy figures, and uh, they're going for a lot on the secondary. But they're going to be re-sent out, recirculated. Basically, what I saw from uh, Jeremy Padauer, who works with Jazzwares, is I think they intentionally uh, sent just one case to each Walmart store to judge how popular this, the figures were going to be. And when they sold out immediately, and they uh, and people were like, "I can't find them. I can't find them. I can't. I can't find them." Jazzwares was then okay. 
we know that there's a demand for them and then they're sending them out in like larger quantities now. So don't pay eBay prices. Don't pay, th what is it going for? 200 bucks or something for the Brandy figure. Yeah, uh, Jeff Simpson said Brandy figs are on eBay for over a hundred bucks. Don't pay those prices. Just wait. Jazzwares has made a lot of these things. They're going to send these things out, push these things out. Just wait and you will get them. Um, but there you go. So there's the Marvel Legends figure. Let me show this one more time because this is absolutely awesome. If you're wondering why am I getting a Marvel Legends War Machine figure when I've said that I'm going to be collecting less Marvel Legends and I'm even selling my X-Men Marvel Legends collection, it's because I'm not getting entirely out of Marvel Legends. I'm just cutting back drastically. I'm selling about 90% of my Marvel Legends collection, but I'm keeping just certain ones that I really, really like. Um, like the uh, recent Iron Man that was done, uh, I think it was 80th anniversary Iron Man. He's going to be posed with this War Machine. I'm definitely keeping Cosmic Ghost Rider. That's one of my favorite figures uh, of the year. I'm keeping Doctor Doom. I'm keeping some of the Black Widow figures. But I'm keeping Stan Lee. But I'm selling a bunch of them. So uh, if you're wondering, what are you doing, dude, when you said you're going to be getting out of Marvel Legends, I am really, really drastically cutting back on Marvel Legends to make room. Uh, but uh, there are a few that I am going to be uh, continuing to collect. Uh, Night of Ren 789 says Marvel Legends Retro Spider-Man. Highly recommend that one. One of the best of 2020. My favorite. I actually had my hands on one when I found those AEW figures. I had my hands on that. And I had my hands on, I think it was a Maverick figure. Maverick Marvel Legends figure from the Deadpool wave. But I ended up putting them back when I, I got the AEW figures. So here is the Loot Crate box that I got. Um... I am going to go and show you what's in here. So hopefully you don't drop off. If I see a bunch of people dropping off on the stream, that means you don't want to be spoiled to what's in this loot crate box, but it's one of the NECA TMNT loot crate boxes. I'm just going to run through here and show you what's in here. I did already cut the tape and I took the figure out. I'll show you the figure last, but I wanted to check on the figure to make sure it wasn't damaged. But um, this is very, very cool. So these are all the items that come in this box. I think the box was like 50 bucks. Um, and when you consider that the figure itself is like 25 bucks, the rest of this stuff should add up to about 25 bucks. And the way that I look at it, it definitely does. So the first thing is this very, very nice mug here. It's got uh, one of these plastic tops. It's very well made. It's not like a cheap plastic. It's like an insulated uh, mug. But it says TCRI Company Picnic Northampton 84. That's awesome. So it looks like one of those like freebies that if you work for like a big corporation and they have a company picnic, like a summer outing, and they give you like little freebies. This looks like something that TCRI would get. TCRI is the one, the company that uh, like manufactures the mutagen uh, from the cartoon, from the, the comic book series, from TMNT. So that's what TCRI is. If you look at like the little canister um, that comes with the splinter figure, it says TCRI on it. So this is freaking awesome. I love this and I'm gonna use the crap out of this because it also fits perfectly into my drink holder in my car. So I will probably use that for that. Uh, let's see here. This is cool as well. This is a keychain. I do love keychains. Is this lenticular? It is not, but it looks cool. So it is Mirage Studios comic book art. If you can't see that, it says, I'll get you little kitty ga. <laughs> but uh, it says that, and then it says on the back, Chet's Toys. So keychain, mug, got a pretty cool pin. I know a lot of people collect pins. Let's see if I can get it without the glare. I think his name was Fugitoid. I haven't read those comics in a while, but I think his name is Fugitoid. He's from the Mirage comic book series. Sorry about the glare, but my studio lights are up and it's washing everything out. And then we got, this appears to be, This looks like a, it's like a neoprene rubber credit card holder. It's got like sticky on the back. So I don't know what you would 
kind of stick this to. Maybe it's used for like cosplay or something, but it looks like a credit card holder. Like you could just like slap it on your back of your phone case and then use it to hold your credit card. But it says TCRI and it's again, company picnic Northampton 84. So, and then it's got the sticky on the back. It is rubber. And then uh, this is definitely just like a throw in. It's like a little, I don't even know what this is. It looks like a, like a key card that you would use if you're going to work. So maybe this is like a TCRI key card, but that looks like Krang right there. So that's cool. And then we got a little, what is this? It's like a shopping bag. Again, TCRI got handles there. Kind of something that you would get at like a, a Comic-Con or something. So there's that. And then last but not least, actually not last but not least, second to last but not least, because I haven't showed you the figure yet. T-shirt, TCRI, once again, company picnic. White tee, size large, pretty cool. And then here's probably the thing that you're most interested in, in this whole loot crate. This is the figure, and this is badass right here. So I like the way that they use this font here. This font, you can see it's like a foil Teenage, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shredder. That font is the font that they used on the cover of the comic books uh, from the 80s, the Mirage Studios Eastman and Laird's comic books. So I love the way that they kind of take that inspiration from the comic book. But there is Shredder. And yes, he did wear blue. I believe he wore blue when they first fought him. And then when he came back in like, I think it was like issue 19, 20, and 21, the return to New York storyline, he changed to the red. So they already did like a multi-pack of Shredder in the foot where he's wearing the red. But the blue is where I kind of first discovered Shredder uh, because I was reading the comic books before anything. I was reading the comic books and then uh, I think the movie came out and then the cartoon and then the toys kind of all together. But the, the comic book is what um, got me into Turtles. So very, very happy to pick up this Shredder. I don't know if I'm going to open him. He just looks really awesome in the packaging. There's the back. I mean, look at how cool that looks. And I do have a few of the Mirage figures. I have uh, Donnie, Mikey, Leo, April, and then two Mousers. I do not have uh, Raph because the Raph, I, I bought the Turtles from Toy Department in Cincinnati, but the, uh, the Raph was already purchased. So I never got him. I am still looking for the Raph, but those figures are all like well over a hundred bucks each. So I hope that uh, NECA decides to reissue them because I would like to complete the turtles. But there's Shredder, guys. He looks awesome. Very, very cool. Melissa J, thank you for the uh, super chat there. Melissa J says, hi, can you shout out my hubby, Chris Jotka? Chris Jotka, shout out to you if you're watching right now or if you're watching on the replay. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Your uh, wife, Melissa J, wants, uh, wants you to be shouted out. So there you go, my friend. Hopefully you had a great week. Hopefully you had a great Friday, and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, Jeff Simpson said, that is wickedly cool, or wicked cool. Teddy Altman says, one million likes, I name my son Shredder. <laughs> that would be amazing if you named your son Shredder. My kids are actually named after professional athletes. Mrs. Cincy does not like to admit that. But uh, I was the one that came up with her names, and I was thinking of two professional athletes at the time that I recommended the names to her. I didn't tell her that because I didn't want her to think our girls are going to be named after male athletes, but uh, she liked both names, and uh, we, we went with it. So, Roman Sora says, are you still backing the Sentinel since you're getting rid of X-Men? I am uh, I'm not sure because... Here's what I'm doing. I'm selling all of my X-Men Legends, but I'm going to purchase the Mafex Cyclops, the Mafex Brown Suit Wolverine, and the Mafex Gambit, and probably any future Mafex X-Men figures. And I honestly think that that Sentinel will scale very, very well with my severely downsized X-Men collection. 
Um, I think that if I sold all my X-Men figures, it's going to clear out a lot of space, give me more room to display stuff. Because uh, the Legends, as much as I love them, they just take up so much space. So, uh, Knight of Ren says, I saw the Jazz Wars UFC stuff at Walmart today, Cincy. Um, the UFC stuff, I don't understand why they did what they did. They're a weird scale. You would think that Jazz Wars would make them the same scale as the AEW figures, but they are very, very small compared to the AEW figures. AEW figures are like, they scale well. The AEW figures scale well with WWE elites. They're almost the same size. You could see I got them right there. And they scale perfectly. But those UFC figures are like, they're like six inch or shorter. And something can be said about the fact that they're barefoot because they're UFC fighters. But still, they're severely undersized. And I don't understand why Jazzwares did that. I think that they would have sold a lot better. Because I'm seeing a lot of pictures on like Instagram of people finding these gigantic AEW displays at their Walmarts. This is like the second wave of them coming in. And uh, all of the AEW figures are cleared out. And all that's left are some belts, some AEW belts, and all the UFC figures. So people are not buying the UFC figures. And I honestly think it's because they're so out of scale. If they scaled perfectly with the AEW figs, figures, those things would have sold. I guarantee it. The other thing that's kind of working against the UFC figures is that they it doesn't look like they did digital face scans. So the faces look a little off. Um, they look like they don't look like the actual fighters. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, Jazz Warriors, if you want to improve uh, the sellability of those UFC figures, digital face scans, I know it's probably going to cost you a lot of money because you have to pay all those UFC fighters and have probably individual contracts with the UFC fighters. Um, and then make them to scale with the AEW figures so that they can all pose together. Because someone like me, I'm going to have a detail for wrestling and I'm going to have Rest, WWE figures, I'm going to have AEW figures, and if I had uh, UFC figures that were kind of the same scale, I know it's one's a sport, one's sports entertainment, but that's how I would pay, pose them. That's how I would display them is with the wrestling figures. So just a little suggestion, if anyone from Jazz Wears is watching, fix the scale, and uh, they will sell better. I didn't realize there was a want for UFC figures, Art G says. Um... I think that the people that watch UFC are probably less inclined to collect action figures versus those that watch wrestling. Uh, I think that a lot, a lot of people that watch professional wrestling are more, I don't know, like into nerdy pop geek culture, whereas people that watch UFC probably aren't into collecting action figures and toys. That's just my personal perception. Me personally, I've been a UFC fan for many, many years. I actually trained in MMA for like five years. So I'm a huge UFC fan. I haven't watched it as religiously as I used to watch it, but there's a lot of fighters that if they're in a pay-per-view, I'll buy the pay-per-view just to watch their fight. Um, but yeah, that, that's just my own thoughts. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the people that would watch UFC would buy toys, but that is my thoughts. I'm going to open something up because I've been just talking and showing you stuff for all this time. I'm going to open up this Marvel Legends figure because I want to, because it looks freaking awesome. Do I have a cutting? I guess I do. So while I do this, bam, you'll notice that the angle of this camera has changed. I actually put two desktop risers under both these monitors and because the camera is attached to the monitor, my angle has changed. It's actually look, looking down on me now, whereas before it was kind of straight on. So that allowed me to move the mic down so that the light can come in this way and the mic won't block the light. Anyway, there's some behind the scenes stuff if you give a crap, but uh, I'm just wanted to uh, let you know why it might look different on this stream going forward because these monitors are like, they're much higher now. And I am also not straining my neck. I felt like I was looking down a lot at my monitors. And a lot of the monitor was concealed before. But now, because it's on these like desktop risers, it's freaking awesome. It's awesome. I love it. Anyway, guys. Since he, what lineage did you train? I've been training in uh, Hoist Gracie system for a few years. That's awesome, dude. I trained uh, 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I started in Krav Maga, actually. I, I did some Krav Maga stuff, and then I got into Muay Thai. I was doing Muay Thai. I, I did some uh, BJJ, some Bra Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I did boxing. Um, basically, at the BJJ gym that I was training at, we had a guy that uh, wrestled collegiately. So we, we did some wrestling. We had a, a Muay Thai guy uh, who trained specifically in Muay Thai. So it was, it was a true like mixed martial arts kind of uh, curriculum, I guess. But I really liked uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I felt like I got a really good workout that way. Um, Muay Thai was okay. It was just oh, way too much jump roping for me. <laughs> I felt like we spent like 30 minutes jumping and skipping rope. And I was just like dead by the time we actually started kickboxing and striking and stuff. So, but yeah, that's what I did. Um, I stopped training when Tay Tay was born. I also stopped really playing ice hockey. Um, but I, I don't know if I would get back into mixed martial arts. It's a big strain on the body. I was in great shape while I was doing it, but uh, it is a lot of, I got hurt a lot. I got a lot of injuries and at my age right now, it's probably not the best idea, but I would get back into ice hockey because I love that sport. There was a lot of accessories here. So I'm just taking everything out and I'm going to show you everything that it comes with. And then I'm going to show you the figure, but uh, see King Dingling says, dude, I'm 48 BJJ is still less stress on the joints. It is. That's true. I was actually, I did pretty good when I was doing jujitsu and I actually thought about um, doing some of the, uh, what were they called? The North American grappling association tournaments. Cause I think I, I would have fared very, very well because um, for my age, I think I'm in pretty good shape and I just think that I would have done really well, but I, I never ended up uh, getting in a tournament because uh, um, had a kid. Tete was born. But I do think that that's the one thing that if I could go back and actually like uh, have the balls to, to do it, I would have done that. And just to enter the tournament, see how far I could get, see if I could win it. Um, holy cow, there's a lot of freaking little parts to this thing. I just I don't want to drop anything because there's like little smoke effects and stuff. Uh, OK, so we're down to just the figure now. I know it's loud, guys. Red Cup Review, how's it going? Damn, this thing is loud as frick. All right, Nadia Amin, love your toy show. Please collect toys until you are an old man. I probably will. I probably will. Um, I haven't stopped so far. I've been collecting since I was uh, four years old. So 41 years I've been doing this. Art says you got to try the Escrima sticks. A lot of coordination involved. Um, I actually, that was one of the things that I was going to, to start getting into is um, Filipino stick fighting, Escrima, uh, which is badass and just looks cool. Uh, but I never got into that. Um, I did really, really like the Krav Maga. I did like uh, uh, people when they, when someone had like was attacking you with a knife uh, defenses for not getting stabbed to death. Um, also disarming someone that's pointing a gun at you. That was really cool. For those that don't know, Krav Maga is like the... Uh, Israeli anti-terrorist uh, fighting system. So it's uh, pretty intense. It was intense as frick, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. I did. Uh, I got knocked out twice. Uh, one from <laughs> one from uh, it was, I, I think I got concussed. I, I blacked out cause I got just rattled. And then I also got choked out once uh, and blacked out, but it's a good experience. It's good to, uh, know what that feels like when you black out because I got caught in it's called a rear naked choke when someone's choking you and uh, I, I felt fine I was like no I, I can breathe I'm I can breathe I'm fine and then I was just like out just like that it felt like it was weird because I was like I'm fine I'm fine and they're like are you sure you don't want to tap I'm like no I, I can breathe I'm fine and then I just saw darkness coming in like this and then it just it was dark and then I, I woke up like a couple minutes later and they're like dude you blacked out you got choked out. <laughs> but anyway, I'm still alive now. Um, so here's the war machine. He looks freaking awesome. I got to say, I had the old Toy Biz one. This is just a vast, vast improvement on the Toy Biz one. I, this looks very, very cool right out of package. Uh, nice joints, nice articulation. Let me see if I can run through the articulation real quick. Um, double jointed elbows. He Does he have a... 
it looks like that there would be like swivel right there on the um, upper forearm, but there's not. He has the um, hinge at the wrist. Let me check out their shoulder pad. So that's like a soft plastic. So when you move the shoulder joint up, that moves up. It's not on a joint though. It's just kind of like soft plastic there. The guns, they are on a ball peg. So they can swivel, they can kind of tilt a little bit the Gatling gun there and then this big thing, rocket launcher, whatever that thing is. Uh, but they can also go back, which is cool. So let me see if this one goes back too. Oh, that's awesome. So when he's not in battle mode, they can go back and then they can go up. This is really cool, guys. Uh, upper thigh swivel, double joint and knees. Look at that. And then uh, ankle articulation. Very, very cool. Look at that. And then he's got the um, ab crunch and he's got swivel in the waist. Um, all right, so let's go through the accessories. By the way, he can move his head up that much. So I guess if you're doing like a flying, is that how far he can move his head back? If you're doing a flying, he can't look like straight up, but decent articulation in the neck. Uh, but there you go. There's that. And let's see here. So accessory wise, he comes with this blast effect right here. This blast effect right here. This is probably one of my favorite um, kind of effects is this missile effect. And um, you can actually attach these missiles to, let me do it here real quick. This is sweet. Look at this. That's really cool. So it's got like the um, the puff of smoke there and then the, the trails of the missiles. Definitely one of my favorite effects for sure. Um, and then it has this blast effect here. It's got this kind of like exhaust effect for his feet. It's got two of those there. And he has, I don't know if I showed you this one, but this blast effect here. And then he's got two small bl blast effects right there. Kind of like what came with the Black Widow figure that you could put at the end of her suppressed gun. And then also this came in the Black Widow deluxe figure as well. These little, little smoke, smoke trails, I guess. I don't know what you would call that. But uh, this thing's loaded. What was this, like 30 bucks? Totally worth it. 100% worth it. If you're looking for this figure, I hope you find it because this thing is badass. Um, and then he does come with the unhelmeted head sculpt. There's Rhodey, comic book Rhodey, James Rhodes. This is cool. This is such a cool figure. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why I didn't take a closer look at this, but I did not know that it came with this many accessories. So it's only like 10 bucks more than a regular Marvel Legends figure, uh, but it comes with just a ton of stuff. Absolutely awesome. So there you go. One more time. War Machine. The uh, This gun right here on his wrist does have little peg holes there. So you can actually, let me see if this works. Just want to plug in some of these things, see what they look like. So you can plug in like the small blast effect of that one. Let's see if I can do both. No pinless joints on the elbows. Holy frick, you're right. So um, shout out to Knight of Ren. Pinless joints on the elbows, if you could see that. Very, very awesome. I'm trying to plug in this other blast effect here. Um, all right. So I just got a, uh, here's some breaking news. I just got an email from Sideshow that the new Hot Toys Luke Snowspeeder figure 
apparently is available for pre-order. And while we're watching this, I'm not going to show you anything, but I want to see how much it is real quick. So that if you're thinking, oh, it comes with a little. So when he's uh, in the Battle of Hoth, when he uses that like grappling thing to shoot himself up to the top of the, the bottom of the ad at it comes with that just in this picture here. Let me see how much this thing is. He comes with a secondary head sculpt, uh, unhelmeted, $265, $265 for this. It looks fantastic. He is all dirtied up and stuff, so it can be a great Luke when he arrives on Dagobah and just jumps in the freaking swamp. $265, sideshow.com. If you're into that, you can pre-order that. Uh, I believe the release date on that, April of 2022. So we're going to have to wait some time for that. Almost two years for that figure to uh, to be released. But uh, I guess if, if you're into it, you have plenty of time to save up for it. But yeah, April of 2022. Hot Toys, you're killing me with the price, $265. It looks great. I'm probably going to get it because Empire is my favorite movie of all time. Um, but uh, it does look awesome. Pre-ordered mine about an hour ago. Talman80 said, my email is so friggin' delayed. I literally, I'm looking at the time that I received this email, 5.53 p.m. So one minute ago, because it's 5.54 central time right now. So I literally just received that. So I don't know if they're late on the email notifications or if I was just late getting it. Uh, I want to do one more thing. I want to put this effect in because I think it looks so cool. See how it looks. Oh, that's so badass. All right. So <laughs> look at that. Oh, this is such a cool figure. You guys got to get this figure. Um, I love it. Absolutely love this figure. I know I just got it, but um, it's up there. It is up there. Um, I don't, it's not going to be Cosmic Ghost Rider for my favorite legend of the year, but I will say it is definitely, definitely up there. Badass. Get it, guys. Get it if you can. Target is where I have seen it. I don't know if anyone's found it at Walmart. If you have found the War Machine at Walmart, um, shout it out in the chat. Uh, but uh, let's see what I'm going to open next. I'm going to open up uh, The Fiend next, but I want to get to these uh, this chat here, these comments, and uh, let's talk about some stuff here. So... Jeff Simpson says the Luke looks awesome. Nadia, I mean, says, who do you think will make the best Iron Man Patriot, Marvel Select, or Marvel Legends? Because I'm still looking for that Marvel Iron Man Patriot. Uh, which Iron Patriot are you looking for? I will tell you right now that the Marvel Legends Iron Patriot from Endgame uh, looks fantastic, and it's got a lot of size to it. Um, so I will say that that figure looks great. I would definitely recommend that figure if you're looking for like the Iron Patriot from Endgame or Rockets on his shoulder. It's a very cool looking figure. Um, Hot Toys are killing me with the price. Nemesis Enforcer says, did you pre-order Beachhead? I uh, did not, but um, I had a friend reach out to me that found a Beachhead and is uh, shipping it my way. So I'm very excited to get that. Uh, I do have in a video that I'm editing right now, which hopefully I'll get up uh, on Patreon tomorrow, so it'll be on YouTube on Sunday. Um, I do have some G.I. Joe classified figures in that. So definitely check out that video. Uh, let's see. A Knight of Ren says, Hell, Hot Toys production is like a movie. Takes two years to produce a figure. Exactly. It's crazy how long it takes for those things. Um, they've got to be the longest wait time of any figure producer, right? I know Mafex wait times get up there. Same with SH Figure Arts. Mezco's sometimes. I mean, Wick took an, a year, but I mean, Hot Toys is freaking putting stuff out two years. Two years. Uh, let's see here. About Figs 155 says, it's not 400. Gilster 37, don't buy Hot Toys, sorry. Um, 
where was I? Nick Lax. When are we getting an updated room tour, including the arcade room? Um, soon, I think. Very soon. I still have not unboxed my Hulkbuster or the Mark 43. Mark 43. Mark 43. Haven't unboxed those yet. Also, my arcade is kind of in a state of flux right now because we are um, building a bar in the loft. So I'm not sure where the arcade machines are going to go. I actually want to buy another arcade machine, whether it's Turtles or NBA Jam or Golden Tee. I definitely want to buy another arcade machine. So I'm not sure where they're going to go. So um, I would say once I probably once I make some more room and sell uh, the legend stuff off, I'll get the display looking right, and then I'll I'll probably um, get into a collection tour video. I passed on the fiend because the Joes are more important to me. It had to be there at the same time. That's what happened to me with the uh, retro Spidey. Is uh, Walmart did that reset and they had everything out, and I had to get the AEW figures, so I had to pass on the retros. I didn't have to, but I also didn't want to spend freaking 130 bucks on toys in one visit. So I was like, oh, I can get this retro Spidey another time. I'm opening up The Fiend right now, by the way. Uh, that war machine is sick. I still need to get it, Michael Osborne says. Uh, Philly MTL says, did you pick up any comics? Did you break something? Yeah. Uh, I do this. I can see the coins, but I can't see them now. All right, sweetie. Just leave it there, and I'll fix it. Okay. I'll get them out. All right, so I got the Fiend here, and I forgot that they have these rubber band things, so I need to cut those. Hey, sweetie pie, can you shut my door? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank hey, you. where's Willie right now? Um, it's he downstairs. Is he being good? Yeah. All right. Uh, I did, I did pick up comics, uh, Philly, but they're actually on the video that I'm editing right now. So the video that's going to be up on YouTube on Sunday, you'll see my comic haul then. And uh, I got some really good, uh, good pickups there. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, but let me, I'm trying to get this away from the mic because it's so damn loud. All right, I have been waiting for this figure so freaking long. Checking the joints. WWE figures, the Elite figures, I found some recent WWE Elite figures that the joints were just super freaking loose on. Kind of disappointing, but uh, this Fiend figure looks pretty damn good. And I, this is, this is definitely my favorite WWE Elite figure of the year. It beats Riddle. I think uh, Matt Riddle was my favorite, but... Now that I got this one in hand, I mean, this thing looks amazing. Can you see that? I'm trying to show you the, the face on this thing. This freaking face looks amazing. It's got wash on the teeth. You cannot see that when I do this close-up. It just looks like gray or dark. But you could see the white teeth, and it's got like a wash in between the teeth that just looks really, really cool. And it's also got these wrinkles in the mask and the forehead there, which you, again, you cannot see, but it looks awesome. This is awesome. This is definitely, this was a A plus figure right here. Um, and then you could see like the, the hair, the dreads, and then here's his tattoos. He has a, uh, Double-jointed knees. Is that double-jointed elbows? Single-jointed elbows. But, um, I mean, the tattoos, very nicely done. The attire, nicely done. Typical WWE Elite articulation. Got an ab crunch, waist swivel, shoulder articulation, bicep cut, single-jointed elbows, hinge in the wrist, ankle. Let's check the... Uh, I know he has a boot cut, right? Boot cut, and there's the ankle articulation, and ankle ankle pivot. Very, very a freaking awesome figure. And then he carries that 
crazy ass looking lantern or looks like a face a head so he's got that lantern and then he's got uh, alternate hands basically lantern carrying hands right there as you could see this is an awesome figure so i mean i'm like two for two right here this war machine freaking incredible figure the fiend if you collect wrestling figures incredible looking figure Absolutely amazing. It's one of the best face sculpts I've seen on any WWE figure. So he's going to go front and center in my WWE shelf uh, just because this is absolutely awesome. So I definitely recommend that one. Uh, but let's get to uh, the chat once again. Got to clean up a little bit here. Got to drink some of my Diet Coke or my Coke Zero. I have loose accessories all over the friggin' place now. And Ferb said, I don't know because the comments jumped. Let's see what Ferb said. Hey, are you still collecting Power Rangers Lightning Collection? I've, uh, I'm taking a hiatus on Power Rangers right now just because there's so much other stuff that I'm collecting, so much other stuff that I have to sink money into. Uh, I think NECA Turtles kind of killed me it, as far as like um, the lines I was collecting because they just keep pumping out stuff and I just really like their stuff. Um, I know a lot of it's hard to acquire, but um, I just really like all the NECA stuff, all the NECA Turtle stuff. Tom Flurry says the missiles on the war machine effect come off, you know, since yeah, it's freaking sweet. Um, I'll show this one more time. So there's the missile effect and you can actually take the missiles off. So that's very, very cool. Now I can't get it back on. <laughs> there we go. That is just so damn cool. Um, I think one of these effects... One of these has got to work for the Gatling gun. I don't know. I'll, I'll mess with it later. But again, 100% recommend this. Recommend this. And then I 100% recommend the um, the Fiend figure. Uh, let's see here. Where was I? Andrew Evans said found Beachhead, Starburst Iron Man, or Starboost Iron Man, TMNT Leatherhead 2-pack, and have Casey and Metalhead on the way. Good toy day. Hell yes, man. That's a heck of a haul right there. Uh, nice pickups. Tyler Stickney says, hey. How's it going, Tyler? Nemesis and Force, I wish they made WrestleFest Arcade Cab. That would be very, very cool. Um, one Up should do a wrestling game. I really want Golden Tee, though. I used to I played so much Golden Tee when I was uh, when I was in my single days and I would hang out and more uh, drink. They are identical to the G.I. Joe classified figures. So if you watch the little trailer for G.I. Joe Operation Blackout, I think that's what the game is called. You can actually see, A, you'll see all the different character designs of the figures that we've been looking for and hunting. But B, you will see very, very quick snippets of, I counted three additional characters that we haven't gotten any kind of uh, release information on. But that's a pretty good indicator that that is what the figure will look like. So I guess if you play the trailer and hit pause, you can see Lady J, Storm Shadow in his all white outfit, not the Arctic Mission Storm Shadow, but his all white outfit, and Zartan. So when we're done here, check it out on YouTube. Again, I think it's called G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. Watch the trailer, and uh, you will see potentially what our action figures will look like when they finally do announce that they're coming out. Uh, Gilster says, uh, Masters of the Universe Origins and Masters of the WWE are so awesome. Should I open one? I really don't want to open one. I have the He-Man and Skeletor, but I just I really love the way they look on card. I don't want to open it, but I kind of do want to open it because they come with a bunch of accessories too. And I want to check out the, the articulation. 
Uh, hashtag films, hashtag says uh, get a pinball machine too. Those of you that are in the uh, Cincinnati area, Northern Kentucky area, go to Comics to Games, my old stomping grounds, one of my favorite stores in the entire world. Because uh, Mike and Tess have, I think they still have it, but they had a ton of pinball machines there that you could play. Some awesome pinball machines. I've always wanted a pinball machine. I know they're very expensive. So my poor man's version of having an arcade and pinball machines is having one-up machines, which is not really that much of a poor man's collection because those things are pretty expensive as it is. So, uh, But I've always wanted a pinball machine. I think it'd be very, very cool. I've always wanted an air hockey table, uh, a pinball machine. Uh, also one of those um, those machines that you see it like, like I, I used to work at an um, amusement park when I was like in my 20s called Adventure Landing. Uh, but they have those basketball machines where it's like small mini basketballs and you would th shoot the free throws and then the hoop would go back and forth and stuff. Uh, I've always wanted one of those. Um, I think I need a bigger house before I get any of that stuff because those things take up a lot of real estate. But yeah, just little things that I've always enjoyed and I've always wanted one of my own. <clears throat> Which figure is your favorite, Brandon23? Um of the stuff that I've opened today, the War Machine is definitely my favorite figure that I've opened today. The Fiend is freaking awesome as well. I don't know what my favorite figure is in my entire collection. That that would take some time to think about. I could tell you my favorite like hot toy or, or sideshow collectible, high-end collectible in my collection is still my uh, sideshow uh, Luke on Hoth, uh, Luke on Tauntaun. My favorite collectible in my entire collection if I had to sell everything. I had to get rid of everything and just keep one thing in the entire collection. It would be uh, that guy right there. I'd keep that. The Tauntaun and Luke. That thing actually goes for a lot of money now. That thing is uh, shot up in price. Uh, the Tauntaun is basically like a resin statue, but the Luke is a, uh, a full figure. They're probably at some point. I mean, Hot Toys is definitely going to do a, a Hot Toys Hoth Luke. They're going to do a Hoth Han. Um, they're going to do all the characters in all of their outfits from the original trilogy. They have a, a plethora of character designs from the original trilogy, from the prequels, sequels, to do Hot Toys figures for years on end. So I think we're definitely going to see a Hoth, uh, Hoth Luke at some point. A good indicator is the fact that we were getting a Snowspeeder Luke. And that was originally done by Sideshow. That was a Sideshow exclusive dumb by sideshow and um that's long sold out so hot toys is doing their version now and it looks great i'm looking at it right now although the picture in the email i'm not gonna lie the picture in the email if you got this email look at the email right now but the picture of luke holding his lightsaber and holding on to the grappling thing if you look at the face i am seeing john travolta right now <laughs> <laughs> this face, I wish I could show you. I wish I knew how to show you my screen right now. But if you got that email from Sideshow, it's a daily update from Sideshow. The freaking face on that picture looks like John Travolta. <laughs> anyway, guys. The Jabba's barge is huge. I've never seen one in reference before. Jeff uh, McElwee says, um, it is very, very large. You could see it up there. Um, I mean, it Look at Grayskull. That Grayskull is huge. The Ewok village is up there. That Falcon right there, that's the big Millennium Falcon. That's the Legacy Falcon. So that thing is gigantic. And you could see how big the sail barge is up there. I mean, it stretches well across two Detolfs, and then it's still some more on this end and on this end. Part of the reason I have that Harley Quinn mallet there is its doorstop. When this door opens... It hits that mallet and doesn't hit my sail barge because that's how I mean that's how it has to be to fit up there. And when my door opens, it's it would smash into that sail barge. So I have to have the mallet down there as a doorstop. <laughs> so it's a functional mallet. <clears throat> Andrew says, uh, "Are you excited for TMNT Ronin comic next week?" Hell yes, Eastman and Laird returning to Ninja Turtles. I'm I'm. I have a guess. So for those that don't know, I'm going to give you the synopsis of this comic book and you can decide for yourself if you want to go out to your local comic book store, support your local comic book store and find this comic. Issue one of TMNT Ronin is being done by Eastman and Lair, the original creators of Ninja, of Ninja Turtles, of the comic book. 
And the synopsis is that it's taking place in the distant future and three of the brothers are dead and there's only one turtle left. You don't know who it is. You don't know which turtle it is, but this turtle, whoever it is that survived that's left carries all of their weapons. So he carries the katana, the nunchuck, the sai, the bow staff. Um, and I guess I'm not sure how soon it'll be before it's revealed which turtle that is, but my guess is that it's Michelangelo. The reason I guess that it's Michelangelo is because throughout all of TMNT, he's kind of portrayed as the fun loving, not so serious, likes to ham it up um, turtle brother. And I think that in the far distant future, he matures. He has to take up the mantle of being the last turtle, the last Ronin. And um, that that's a good character arc right there. Leonardo's already a leader. So it's not a huge character arc for him. Donnie's a tech guy. So, I mean, I could see a tech guy being like the arcing to like the, the, the strong last survivor. Raph's the hothead. I don't really see him being that guy, but Mikey would make sense. Starts out as the jokester, the prankster, the fun loving one, the pizza loving one, matures into complete freaking badass turtle. So that's my guess. I, uh, I was talking to the guys at Keith's Comics about that, and that was my guess, and they kind of agreed with me that they, that's who they think it is too. Q's a gamer. I'm going to be hunting Motu Origins tomorrow after work. My Wally World's supposed to put them out on the 15th. Q's gamer, good luck. I hope you find the ones you're looking for. Um, they look great in package. I'm super tempted to open them, uh, but uh, good luck finding them. I hope you find them. Michael Osborne, where did you get your War Machine? Target is where I got it. Um, Nadia, and I think that's the only place that they've been seen is Target so far. Nadia says, my next turn is check is going to all my action figures. I just started a new line, Academia, Ac Academy Heroes. I have the Almighty. So you're probably talking about the McFarlane figures, My Hero Academia. They look fantastic. I love the, the anime. I need to catch up. I'm still on season one. So uh, I know that a lot has happened in that anime, and I need to definitely watch that. I just have to find the time to do so. But uh, I love what I've seen so far. I'm still in season one, though. Jeff says, uh, good luck, man. I found him today. I'm in OKC for reference. Talking about the Motu Origins figures. Michael Osborne says, since your collection is sick, I like what I got. I don't have the biggest collection. I don't have the most hot toys. I don't have the most Transformers. I don't have the most of anything. But I just, I like, I collect what I like. Occasionally, and this happens, so don't feel bad if it happens to you. Occasionally, you'll fall out of love with something that you've collected, and uh, it might be time to sell it off. Um, I, I mean, I, I have to do that to keep the collection going. There's always new stuff that's coming out that I want to buy, and I don't have an endless supply of money, so I have to sell off stuff that I don't love anymore or that I don't, I'm, that I'm not like feeling a lot of passion for sell it off to have money to buy the stuff that I want. So there's a couple things that I really want to buy right now. And in order to do so, I have to sell some stuff off. So that's kind of where I am with my uh, collecting, but thank you for admiring the collection. Um, I, I like what I've collected so far and I I'm glad that you appreciate it too. Uh, cool guy TV says the fiend fig is dope. I'm looking for Rick rude. Jeff Simpson says, that's the only WWE fig I want right now. If you're going to pick one, I mean, that's the one to have. It looks freaking awesome. And it kind of, it's a, I mean, it, it's obviously a wrestling figure, but you could have it in your collection as a non-wrestling figure. I mean, it just, lo he looks like a, he could be posed with like NECA horror figures um, and fit in perfectly. Uh, I just love the character. Uh, Bray Wyatt, I don't know how much of that he ad libs, but uh it's freaking gold. It's absolute gold. Everything from the look, from his wrestling, he's a hell of a wrestler for being kind of a, a bigger dude. Um, to his themes, his theme song is freaking badass. Um, I downloaded his, I 
paid for it on iTunes and I listen to it in the car. It's, it's such a, it's like a metal song. It's, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I love the, uh, the fiend. Have you picked up plasma ghostbusters? I got mine yesterday. Just got mine yesterday. I think they look pretty good. I've picked up a few. I'm not sure if I'm going to collect the whole line, but I think they look pretty good. Again, they kind of suffer from the UFC, um, kind of treatment in the fact that they're out of scale. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why Hasbro made the Ghostbusters figures out of scale to Legends and G.I. Joe and all their other figures that they make. Why the hell did they not make them in scale with everything else? And I don't understand why Jazzwares made the UFC figures so damn small. It's like they're in their own scale. It's, it's strange. I don't get it. If anyone has a good reason for why they did that, please let me know in the chat. Uh, and I'll definitely read it out loud, but I, I don't understand. Nemesis Enforcer said, nailed the torso. Probably talking about the Fiend figure. Gilster says, do you like Kenner hockey starting lineups? I loved them back in the day. Back in the day, I collected a lot of starting lineups. I, I remember I had a, a pretty rare starting lineup. I had a uh, Ken Griffey Jr. I think he was jumping up in the air and fielding a ball. And uh, that was one of my favorite figures back then. Like It was like early 90s. Um, I remember I had a Gretzky, a Brett Hall, I think. I had a ton of starting lineups. I think they're awesome, but I just don't collect them. Your toy hunt videos are awesome. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Nadia says he looks like the Joker going to wrestle. Crazy style. Wow. Talking about the Fiend. Toy Avenue says, watching your channel got me into collecting WWE Elite figures. I've been a WWE fan since I was a kid, but never collected the figures until now. Comments just jumped, damn it. Um, well, I'm glad that you are, are collecting that line. I really, really like what uh, Elite has done this year with the Riddle figure. Uh, the Ciampa figure that they did last year is a great, great figure. Uh, it looks like that the, oh, the Adam Cole figure, the second one they did that's not in the Undisputed Era 3-pack where he's doing the... The, the fingers up. That's a great figure. They just done, they're doing a great job right now. Elite is. And I love the AEW figures. It's just a really good time to be collecting stuff because most everything is being done very, very well. I know distribution, distribution wise, it's kind of hard to find some stuff occasionally like GI Joe classified and whatnot, but the quality of the action figures that we're collecting is really, really up there right now. Again, there's some scale issues with like UFC and Ghostbusters, but for the most part, it's a freaking awesome time to be a toy collector right now. Um, Keith Green. Oh, wait, I, I skipped a, a sh uh, an S ton of comments. Sorry, guys. The comments jump on me and I, I can't find my place. So I'm just going to start where I can see comments. Nemesis Enforcer says, Raph's revenge would be too brutal yes it would because he's already a damn hothead so if he's getting revenge or if he's the last ronin or if he's the last turtle i mean he's just going to be freaking murdering people de decapitating people um my targets just bamboozled me today this is roundhead k2000 he said uh he stood strong telling me they were not going to sell their gi joe line until 8 14 which is today. Um, so he wouldn't get them out for you, even though today's the damn release day. Keith Green just got here. Has anyone seen Baroness anywhere? No. Um, as far as I know, and this is just me observing things online, paying attention to all the, you know, toy collectors, toy hunters and stuff across the nation. No one has seen that Baroness and coil uh, coil bike. I think is what it is. No one has seen that yet. Um, so it's all a guessing game as to when that thing's finally going to show up. But definitely going to be a popular pickup because that Baroness looks amazing. Looks absolutely amazing. If you look at like the close-up pictures, looks fantastic. Uh, Alistair McRae says, let your collection pay for your collection. 100%. Um, that's how it should be. Uh your stuff that you collect should be able to fund future purchases. Hey, Cincy, did you order any of the Ultimate Thundercats from Super 7? 365 Toy Hunter? I did, indeed. I ordered, I pre-ordered um, Lino, Panthro, uh, um, Tigra, basically all of the main Thundercats team 
and the big beefed up mumra. I didn't get the little puny mumra. I got the big, it was like a $65 like deluxe mumra. And I think that's what I'm going to roll with as far as my collection on Thundercats. They could go really, really deep as far as like side characters and henchmen and whatnot. But again, I got to limit what I buy, limit what I have on display. I don't want to get, I don't want the display to get out of control and unmanageable. So I'm going to get um, the Thundercats team. Hopefully they redo Wily Kit and Wily Cat. I think they will. And then Snarf, obviously. But um, the big, you know, monster Mumra. That's what I'm getting. So Roundhead K2000 finishing what he was said after he said he got kind of bamboozled at his target. Uh, he said, and was told they would sell them on first come first served on the pegs in the store. 12 midnight, they sell over the phone for 6 a.m. pickup. What a joke. Uh, certain targets have some weird ass policies, honestly, just weird. Um, but, um, a lot of times the, the people that you talk to, the target employees, they're not collectors. They don't know what's up. All they have to go by is what they're told by like their managers. So, uh, I know a lot of times it's frustrating, but just, be as nice as you can to target employees if you can. I have found personally that I have gotten more out of being nice to the target employees than being kind of pissed off at them. When I'm just overly nice, very thankful, very like please and thank you, they respond in a positive manner. And occasionally I've gotten stuff that I've asked for that it's been a release day that it, they didn't have it out yet. And they went in the back and got it out and put it on the pegs and let me have first crack at it. I even got to pick my favorite paint app. So that's my, just personal experience to be as nice as possible. And uh, you get nice things. People are nice back to you, I guess. Treat people as you would want them treated to you. That's not the expression. Treat people as you would want them to treat you. There you go. That's what I would tell my kids. <laughs> uh, let's see. And was told. Oh, I already read that. Sorry. Uh, Jeff Simpson said he's very underrated. His dad was great also. So you're talking about good old Husky Harris, uh, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt. His dad was great. Yes. Um, third generation, I think, or second generation. I think he's a third generation wrestler. I'm waiting for his match with Braun Strowman. He's taking the title. I'm telling you. I think he's taking the title. Uh, I think he got a uh, he uh, got a short run when he had the title before because I think his wife uh, was pregnant and they were giving birth, so he took time off for like paternity leave. Uh, but I think he's getting the belt, uh, and I would love to see him as champion. Braun's great, and I think if if uh, if Bray wins the title, I could see Braun going heel again. He's kind of hinting at like a heel run uh, with some of his recent promos. Uh, let's see here. Victor Victoria says, are they still releasing the Eddie Guerrero figure? Yeah, I pre-ordered that one. It should be releasing, I think, in September is when it's uh, releasing. Can't wait for that one. Love Eddie. He was one of my favorites. Absolute favorites. Um, I loved when he won the title. I was so... I, Marked out so big, so huge when he won that damn title off Brock. Um, it was such a great moment. What time is it? 6.30? I still got 30 minutes, guys. So uh, keep the questions coming. Keep the comments coming. The comments just jumped on me again, so I'm going to try and find where I was. Night of Rensen, my target had zero G.I. Joe figures. Probably because they sold them all before because people were asking them to grab them out of the back. Kanji Club said, better to find a target employee who is not a collector than one who is. 100% correct. Yes. A uh, little uh, food for thought. I don't know if this is just, uh, if this is like uh, strategic tactics or not. But if, uh, if it's like a release day and uh, like it's for the 14th. And uh, you know that the toy employee just gets hounded, absolutely hounded by people calling, by people asking questions, asking them to get stuff out of the back, and they're just kind of sick of it. 
Same with the electronics guy, because a lot of times if there's no toy employee working there, the electronics desk is usually located kind of near the toy aisle. So the electronics guy usually feels all the phone calls. So he hears from collectors, hey, do you have this? Do you have this? When are you getting it? When are you putting it out? Can you put one aside for me? They're just tired of it. If you, if you find an employee that's not in the electronics, not in the toy section, like maybe they're out in like the clothing area or maybe they're in the office supplies area and you give them a DPCI, you give them something to look for in the back, they might go grab it for you. So there's a little advice from a toy hunter, from someone who has benefited from that action previously. Don't ask the guy that works in toys because he's tired of hearing it. Don't ask the guy that works in electronics. Wander on over to like the home goods section, like the home furniture section, the freaking clothing aisle. Ask a Target employee and just say, hey, uh, I was wondering, um, this is showing as in stock in your store. Would you might be able to check on this DPCI for me? They check it in their thing. They're probably looking for a break from what they're doing. They probably want to go in the back and do something different. They might be tired of stocking the, the Pedialyte in the baby aisle or something. So they might be very, very gracious to go in the back and check on that item and grab it for you. But it has worked for me in the past. Try it, I guess, and see if it works for you. I did get a super chat. Let's see who that was from. That was from Gilster. Uh, thanks, Gilster. I appreciate that. Would you want a WWE Elite Cindy Lauper? I think it'd be cool to do like the different um, celebrities that have been in like WrestleManias and stuff. Obviously, the Mr. T, that was a huge seller. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it would be cool to get like different celebrities that have been in WWE in WrestleManias. Um, I think a Pete Rose figure would be freaking awesome because he had a few programs with uh, Kane. Is that something on my face or did I just miss a spot shaving? Um, a Pete Rose figure, I would buy in a freaking heartbeat. A, because I'm a Reds fan. B, because I've met Pete Rose. I got his autograph, shook his hand. Um, C, because it's that would be awesome. A Pete Rose action figure in WWE Elite. Make it happen. Good question, Gilster. I appreciate that. And thank you for the super chat. Uh, where was I? Let's see here. Eben 700 said, what do you think of McFarlane doing Marvel? Just a thought. Think they did such a good job with DC. If you'd like to see it. I think Hasbro is just killing it uh, with Marvel. I don't know how McFarlane would do. <clears throat> Obviously a good figure is a good figure. So if anyone can do uh, a figure better than Hasbro, more power to them. But I just think that Hasbro, I mean, they've got their, they're S down right now, honestly. Uh, they're doing great with Legends. They're doing great with um, Transformers, Studio Series, uh, the freaking Siege line, the Earthrise line, um, Power Rangers, the Lightning Collection. They're doing great. The classified figures I freaking love. What else are they doing? Star Wars? Come on now. Black Series? Black Series figures are the best they've ever been. Hasbro is at the top of their game right now. So... Um, more power to Hasbro. I do think McFarlane could do a good job if they had the Marvel license, but I just really like what Hasbro is doing. I'm running out of drink here. My throat is getting dry. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Ionic blood 666 says, can't wait for Ronin. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Gilster says, uh, check out Pixel Dan's Motu Origins chat with Mattel. Just more info on that line. <clears throat> Toy Avenue says, so far I've collected some of my favorite wrestlers like AJ, Kurt, and The Rock. Going to get a Brock Lesnar and Stone Cold in the future. I think that they're going to do an ultimate version of Stone Cold. We've got an ultimate Rock, an ultimate Brock. Um, I could see them maybe doing an ultimate Kurt. They've done so many Kurt Elite figures, though. I don't know about an AJ figure. They, they seem to be doing, like, although they did an, an ultimate Shinsuke Nakamura. I could see them doing an ultimate AJ. Um, but I, I can definitely see a Stone Cold Steve Austin in the, in the very near future. I think they're going to be doing one. M. Castaneda said, one guy reviewed the Baroness on YouTube. Looks amazing. Um, interesting. So maybe some snuck out of a factory from China, made their way 
overseas and uh, made their way to Mercari and someone paid some extra money to get that Baroness, but uh, I haven't seen a review on it. I have seen pictures and the pictures just look amazing. I'm really looking forward to that figure. Grumpy 79 says, how's it going? It's going great. It's Friday. I hope you all had an excellent week. Uh, hopefully you found some stuff you're looking for. If you went out and searched for some figures and whatnot, Hopefully, if you go out this weekend, I'm going to be going out to uh, a Target, at least one Target. I'm going to be making a trip probably to uh, Dallas Vintage Toys. Um, but if you go out, be safe. Drive safely. Good luck. I hope you find some stuff you're looking for. BTT1216 says, since he, I'll pay $500 a month for a spot in the basement. <laughs> Georgia sucks for collectors. We don't have basements here. We had a basement in uh, Ohio, but in Texas... Uh, the ground. We can't have basements here. It kind of sucks. So they just build houses up as opposed to basements, which is fine. It's nice. I got a loft here. I definitely don't have as much room here as I did in... Um, what happened to my angle of my camera? It feels like my... Did that move? That looks weird. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. I was talking about basements. I don't have as much room here as I did in uh, in the Nerd Bar in Cincinnati, but I love my space here. I love this office. Um, I feel very blessed and fortunate. Richard Beaver, scale could be a license issue. Very, very good point. Richard Beaver says scale could be a license issue. Another company may have the license for true six-inch Star Wars pop figures are bobbleheads because Hasbro has license for three and three-quarter inch scale uh, Star Wars action figures. Richard Beaver Excellent, excellent point. That That is probably <clears throat> the best explanation for why the UFC figures and the Ghostbusters figures are on a different scale. Possibly Mezco owns the, the true six-inch scale license for Ghostbusters because they did a four-pack, Mezco did, and they might have the license. They might have bought the license for a while, which is why the Ghostbusters figures are undersized. UFC wise, maybe Jack Specific still owns part of that license. Weren't they the last ones that did UFC figures? Very, very good point, Richard. Uh, Toy Avenue, whenever this whole pandemic ends and you ever come to LA, you got to check out Frank and Sons Collectible Show. I kind of wish I had done that. Nark and I went out to uh, <clears throat> PowerCon in 28, was it 2018? And um, one of the things we talked about doing, because I, I got a rental car and everything, we had a nice Jeep Wrangler. One of the things we had talked about doing was going to Frankenstein's, but uh, we ended up just like staying at the con. We had a lot of fun um, just hanging out at the con, going to power con, hanging out in the hotel bar. We were surrounded by UFC stars. I met Forrest Griffin. I uh, saw um, what's his ass. Uh, a bunch of people. I can't remember their damn names right now, um, but we saw a bunch of UFC fighters there. Uh, it was very, very cool. But yeah, I do. I definitely do want to next time I go to California, once this whole thing goes away, hopefully sooner than later, I want to go to California. I want to hit up Frank and Sons. I want to do some toy hunting. I want to meet up with some people out there. I know a bunch of people that are in California. I want to do it. I want to go to PowerCon. I want to go to freaking SDCC, knock that off the bucket list. Eventually, I want to go there. I know it's super crowded. I know you can hardly walk. I know those are two things that I just can't stand when you go to cons, <laughs> but I definitely want to go to San Diego Comic-Con and just say that I've been there. Um, it would be very, very cool to get in there like before it actually opens though, because that was one of the coolest things. When I went to um, Celebration, I was able to, someone hooked me up and I was able to get in uh, before the con started. So I was able to do all my like filming and stuff before anyone was actually in there. Same thing goes for like whenever I go to C2E2, I usually get in with like a vendor because I know a few vendors that set up there. So I usually get in with them, help them set up, help them out. Um, and then I, I have the vendor badge. So I'm able to get in there like hours before it, it opens. So I could scope things out. I can film stuff. Um, and then by the time everyone rolls in, I know where the stuff is that I've kind of like scoped out. So I know exactly where to go. I can just take my time, not feel stressed out and whatnot. Uh, let's see, where was I? 
New comic smell. I like that handle, by the way. New comic smell. Motu Origins figs are hitting Walmarts in my city on the 18th as per a few different employees. So there you go. Um, New comic smell says, hit up your Walmarts, I guess, now. Because I found some in my area, in the Dallas area. But also try up until the 18th and maybe you'll strike some gold. Is Legends Eddie Guerrero figure still being released? Yes, it is. My target had zero. I'm reading some of these comments twice. Better to find it. I read that one already too. <laughs> Johnny Law, how's it going, man? Uh, Jazzwares announced that scale on UFC was a mistake. Interesting. Series two will scale with AEW moving forward. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if they're going to redo uh, Daniel Cormier, Conor McGregor, John uh, Jones, uh, Habib. Um, who else was in the first wave? I wonder if they're going to redo uh, those figures then in the correct scale. Very interesting. Uh, BTT says, man, I hope those Joes get a better, wider distribution. Me too. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm really, really happy to see so many people interested in GI Joes. Because for a while there, I felt like I was a man out on an island. When I was just collecting the three and three quarter inch, like club exclusives and stuff and and the little three and three quarter inch figures, I felt like no one else was into that. Like I would do like a video uh, where it was like a GI Joe title video and like it wouldn't get that many people watching it. But I just, it makes me really, really happy to see as much interest in Joe's. I guess all it took was six inch Joe's. That's all it took. It, it feels like the collector has kind of transitioned away from three and three quarter. And it, it kind of feels like the companies have too, especially Hasbro, because they don't make that many vintage collection figures anymore. And they're not making that many of the um, three and three quarter inch retro GI Joe figures as well. They, they do look awesome by the way, but they've kind of transitioned to six inch. I think six inch is the new scale going forward for collectors, adult collectors like us, any kid collectors that are watching there too. I'm sure you like the six inch figures too, but I think that's what we're going to see. That's the majority of what we're going to see going forward. Uh, let's see here. Art G has a funny story about getting his Cobra Trooper. Darth Primus says, Art, did you do a video on that? I'm behind on videos, so I definitely need to check that out. But uh, if you did a video on your Cobra Trooper, drop it in the chat so we can watch it. Treat people like you want to be treated. I'm way behind on comments if that's what the most recent comment I'm reading. So Knight of Rents is treat people like how you want to be treated. Nemesis Enforcer said, no target for me for miles and miles. That sucks. I have... Uh, not trying to brag or anything, but I have like, I'm, I'm in a DFW area. So it's very, very densely populated area. I have three targets within like 10 miles, uh, but it sucks that you don't have one. So you kind of have to rely on the online and when bots are buying stuff up, you just kind of SOL. I feel bad. And that sucks, dude. Walt 97. Are you getting the Matt and Brian figs from super seven? I thought about it. They're also doing a uh, uh, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. I, want, I kind of want to see what they look like. Um, kind of want to see what they look like. Because, I, I mean, obviously we're going to get a, a Matt Cardona and the AEW figures. I mean, that's just a given. That's 100% given. He'll probably get multiple figures. He's the Michael Jordan of wrestling figure collecting. He's definitely going to get figures in the AEW collection. Um, but... They're not making, at least that I know of, they're not making any impact wrestling figures. So it makes sense for uh, Gallows and Anderson and Brian Myers to kind of team with Super 7 and get their figures there. I'd like it if more um, impact wrestling um, wrestlers... My doorbell just rang. I wonder if that's a delivery. Let's see. Let me check the ring real quick. Because I might have to walk away for a little bit, and you can talk amongst talk amongst yourselves. Because if there's someone waiting there for a signature, Amazon delivery. All right, so right there. <laughs> I just checked the ring, and Amazon just left something. I wonder what that is. What just got delivered? Hmm. I wonder if it's for me. 
Uh, Country Club says, random Friday question. If they made ESPN Sports Center reporter figures, which one would you get? Holy crap, that's random and extremely uh, niche. <laughs> ESPN Sports Center reporter figures. I don't know about that. I'd rather see some uh, some really well done, well articulated athletes done because we haven't really gotten we haven't gotten a good like action figure representation of like with good face scan of like actual like NFL players, MLB players, NHL players, NBA, golf. I mean, I could go right down the line. There hasn't, I mean, we've gotten like almost like statue like figures with McFarland sports picks. We've gotten starting lineups, but those have been, they don't look anything like how they look. Um, we got like, there were like some little articulated, almost like four inch figures, but they didn't look anything like the actual athlete. I'm thinking that it would probably be extremely expensive for a company to have to pay athletes. Knowing what athletes get paid, what pro athletes get paid for their salaries and for endorsements, it's probably cost prohibitive for a toy company to actually get likeness rights from athletes. That's my guess. Because these guys make millions and millions, I mean, $500 million contracts to play a, a sport, to play a game. They're probably going to be, their agents are probably just like, show me the money if you want to turn my guy into an action figure. Um, we've got enter bay figures, but those are 12 inch. I can only imagine what they're paying for likeness rights for like some of those guys that are, uh, that have the enter bay figures. I do. Um, I do really, really, really want a Shaq enter bay figure. Cause Shaq was my favorite fa One of my favorite basketball players ever besides Jordan. I was a huge Still, I'm a huge fan of him. But uh, when he was with the Orlando Magic, Shaq was just the man. I watched like every Orlando Magic game when it was him and, and Penny Hardaway. I was just just a huge fan of his. I collected all of his rookie cards. Um, just a huge fan of Shaq. So I, I kind of do want the Enter Bay Shaq figure. I know that was really random, but you talked about sports figures. So I kind of got there on my... my path. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Where was I? BTT 1216 says, I want to see Otis win a top title. I wonder how long he's going to hold on to that money in the bank case. Uh, and when he's actually going to cash that thing in. Speaking of which SmackDown starts in 14 minutes. So I'm probably going to call it here in 14 minutes at seven. I got to do, uh, I got to do some cardio before I eat my Whataburger. <laughs> Uh, if I figure if I'm going to eat a 1400 calorie meal, because that's what Whataburger's menu is showing right now is for what I'm getting. I definitely got to do some miles on the, uh, the treadmill. Uh, let's see here. Where was I? I would love to see him in AEW with the big dog. Cool guy. TV says, uh, Johnny law says the rush to get UFC series two out means that they will lose butterfly joints. The butterfly joints will return with series three. Man, they're going to be all over the place. They're going to have a heavily out of scale series one, uh, a, a not as articulated series two, and then a, I guess a fully articulated series three. So, man, Jazzwares, you got to get with that. You got to fix that. But it looks like they are fixing it. It's just kind of weird. Uh, let's see here. Thoughts on the toys era, the comedian figure. Hmm. You might be, want to be watching uh, an upcoming video because uh, I will have a lot of thoughts on that, Victor, um, because I'm currently looking at it right now. It's uh, it's slated for uh, one of my future hot toy. This, I mean, this is going to be like a bonus figure. It's not a hot toy. It's Toys Era third party. So it's going to be with my DC Hot Toys video. But um, I like it a lot. There's some things I don't like about it. There's some things I wish they did differently. But overall, it looks awesome. It looks amazing. I like it a lot. What license would you like to see NECA do? I know Diamond Select has this license, but I would have loved to see NECA do Lord of the Rings. Do you think 
Samurai TMNT. Um, hmm. What would I like NECA to do? I don't know. That's a tough question. I'd have to think about that. But right off the bat, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I don't know. I'm thinking about horror movies. I maybe because Halloween is coming up soon. But they seem to have kind of a thing with horror related figures. Um, but I would love to see a NECA Beetlejuice figure. And if NECA doesn't do it, I would love to see a Mezco 112 Collective Beetlejuice figure. One of my absolute favorite movies of all time. One of my absolute favorite actors of all time, Michael Keaton. Give me a Beetlejuice figure. I would love that. Uh, I would also like to see maybe NECA tackle The Lost Boys. Uh, when I, again, one of my favorite horror movies from the 80s. Um, love The Lost Boys. Obviously, we have Funko Pops of Lost Boys, but how freaking cool would it be to get Lost Boys figures? Uh, I think they would do a really, really awesome job with that license, and I would love to see that. Uh, let's see. Roundhead says, uh, every employee has been great, but the way they handle these Joes, uh, the Joe line is crazy. Just check eBay. It's disgusting. Oh, well, keep on hunting. Yeah, man. I mean, there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, I just, just keep trying, keep hunting, check different targets. Again, try different target employees. Don't try the toy guy. <laughs> Don't try the electronics guy. Try someone on the other end of the store uh, with uh, equal access to the back room that might be more willing to help you out. Because um, I've noticed, the thing that I noticed is like if you go to like the home furnishings area and there's a target employee there and you ask them to check a DPCI and ask them to maybe grab something from the back room, they don't call someone on the walkie and say, hey, can someone in toys help this guy out? I, I'm, you know, I don't know any target employees. I don't think, but I think they have to just like help the customer. I don't know if that's like one of their things that they, they strive for and or encourage. Like if a customer asks you a question, you help them out. You don't get, you don't give them the runaround or tell them to talk to someone else. You help them out. So I don't know. It's, it's worked for me in the past. It, it might be something you've never tried before. But um, I mean, give it a try and see if it if it works. Uh, order some figures at CMD store. CN says um, Nemesis Enforcers of Walmart life hack. Yes, Johnny Law says uh, Phantom RX says don't give out the secrets. I got to give out the secrets. I mean, that's what that's what uh, this community is based on is me sharing ways for you guys to get these things that I'm able to get. Um, but yeah, that is, that is kind of a, a little secret. The other secret that people didn't know about, I, I wasn't really, I didn't think people did it that much is that at targets lifting up that bottom shelf, people hide stuff under there. I wasn't aware that it was done so frequently. I mean, you can literally go into a target anywhere in the country and go to the toy aisle and lift that bottom shelf up. And there's probably going to be toys under there. It's just weird. Um, that that's like such a popular place to hide stuff. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm one of those guys on like a magic show, like magic secrets. Like I'm giving out all, <laughs> I'm telling people how to do the tricks. Like, like the magician that's, that's selling out. <laughs> I want you guys to get these damn things. I, I mean, I, I really like these figures, war machine. I want you to find it. If I'm going to talk about how much I like it. I want you guys to find it if you're looking for it. If I'm going to talk about how much I freaking love the G.I. Joe class, I mean, these guys, Heavy Duty, a.k.a. Roadblock, I want you to find these things. This is the one that people are actually able to find on the pegs, but the Cobra Trooper, like, long gone. Um, once that thing starts uh, restocking, hopefully it's going to be restocked. Once people have, once other collectors have their fair shot at, at getting the Cobra Trooper, I don't want to like hoard them now, but I have, I have two. Again, later down the line, when people have gotten theirs, I do want to try and get two more because I think an army of four looks a lot better than an army of two. <laughs> an army of two is just a couple dudes, uh, but an army of four is actually like a small, like little battalion. So 
Um, I think that'd be cool if I got two more Cobra Troopers. But again, I don't want to... I know a lot of guys are looking for that thing, so I don't want to be the one that just like grabs them all and they can't get them. So that's just the the fellow collector in me. Um, but again, eventually I want to, I want two more. Alistair says the advice is true. I've I've asked the housing wares associates that's next to toys. They're always nice about it. I'm telling you, they don't get badgered by collectors day in day day out. They don't get phone calls from collectors. Collectors, I mean, we're, we could be a little bit of a, a burden at times because not because we're just like rude or, or, or like annoying or whatever, just because of sheer volume. There's a lot of people looking for stuff. Um, like if, if you go to like a, a Target and you ask, hey, uh, do you have the G.I. Joe? Or hey, I'm, can you check a DPCI for me? Without even saying what it is, I've had Target employees say, are you looking for the G.I. Joe figures? We had a bunch of guys already call about him this morning. We don't have any. And you could just tell his voice. He was annoyed. He had to talk to several people already about this. And I didn't even ask what I was. I, all I said was, hey, can you check a DPCI for me? Are you looking for the Joe figures? <laughs> so there's just like, a, I mean, if you just think about it, again, those guys just nonstop, nonstop calls, nonstop people asking about it. Uh, all right, so comments just jumped. I apologize, guys. But King King Dingling says the paycheck still state in bold across the top. This paycheck is all because of the guests that come in to our stores or something to that nature. Um, talking about Target employees, I guess. Um, DB says, hold on, it just moved on me. DB says there will be a mass return at Targets when the scalpers don't sell them. True. I've seen that happen. Mass returns when uh, they can't get triple, quadruple the money that they invested in those things. BTT says, I want at least five leader in the middle, two on each side. Uh, by the way, I don't know. I think I shared this on the video I'm editing right now, but when it comes to the Red Ninja, I'm just getting two. I want to get four Cobra Troopers, but I want two Red Ninjas because I, I just think it'd be cool if I had two because they seem more elite if there's only two. If there's four Red Ninjas... They don't seem as like special, but like a ninja, you don't want to freaking F with a ninja. A Cobra Trooper, kind of like maybe a Storm Trooper. Maybe they don't shoot straight. Maybe they're just like new recruits. Maybe they just suck at being like <laughs> uh, warriors. But a ninja, you don't want to mess with a ninja. So like two of them, badass right there. Four of them, okay, they don't seem as important. So I'm, I'm doing two red ninjas four Cobra Troopers. I'm assuming we're going to get Alley Vipers because they're on the back of the packaging. Probably get four Alley Vipers, but the Ninjas, just two, because I'm going to have Storm Shadow in the middle and his two Red Ninjas on the flanking him. It's going to be awesome. Plus, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, like, I I like, like, if, I don't, this is weird, but like, color-wise, you see the Imperial Royal Guards, they're, two, they're both red guys. And then I have one one like leader dude in the middle with Palpatine. Two Praetorians, Kylo in the middle. There's something about like two dudes that are all dressed in red and then one person in between them that's just a completely different color and it just pops. The color pops from your shelf. And I think a storm shadow between two red ninjas will just be like, oh, that's badass right there. That looks good. Uh, let's see here. Where was I? Uh, Silitbang007 says, hey, I actually caught a live stream. You did indeed. Uh, hopefully, you, uh, hopefully you've been here for a while. I've been here. I've been on for an hour and 49. I'm going to go two hours, guys. So 10 more minutes, and then I'm going to do some cardio, and then I'm going to ingest at least 1,400 calories of Whataburger after that. Um, Plus, my throat's getting dry, so I got about a good 10 minutes left in me. But I do thank you all for being here. Of course, right when I'm winding down, right when I'm going to end this in 10 minutes, I have the most people watching this thing. But if you just joined, thank you for joining. I hope you had a great week. I hope you had a great Friday. I hope you have an excellent weekend. And uh, check out the replay. As far as replay goes, I've had some people reach out to me and say, dude, you have so many freaking ads when I watch the replay. I have no control over that. 
when it comes to the uh, the replay of the live videos, they like they YouTube. I don't know if they if they think that my replays have a high watchability, but they throw in so many friggin' ads. It's crazy. So I apologize if you watch the replay and there's a lot of ads. I apologize for that. But YouTube just goes freaking berserk. One guy said that he uh, was watching a replay and there was over 20 ads, which is ridiculous. So I apologize for that. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on DC collectibles now DC direct closing down. It sucks. It sucks because there were the DC essentials line. I don't collect them, but I honestly think that they were doing a great job on that. Uh, the animated figures. I thought that those looked really, really cool. There's a few animated figures that are still coming out. There's a Asriel. There's a Red Hood, Jason Todd, or is it Hush? I don't know, but th those look good. So I do feel bad for the people that they collected those lines religiously and now they're not going to get any more figures out of it. But um, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully you uh, like the, I know the McFarlane figures are way out of scale compared to the DC Direct, like Batman the Animated Series figures, but uh, hopefully you find something that you you like without DC Direct. It sucks that they're closing down, though. G.I. Joe's are hands down the hardest line to find in the wild. I would agree with that. I would I definitely agree with that. Um, it's crazy the amount of attention that that line's getting, the amount of people that are collecting that line. Definitely not something I was anticipating at all. When they announced the classified line, I was like, I wonder how many waves we're going to get out of this before they decide to kill the line because no one's collecting it. It is the freaking polar opposite. Holy crap. There are so many people that are that are collecting this line now. There, I mean, it's good and bad. It's bad because you can't find them if you want them, but it's good because it's showing Hasbro. Hell yes, the demand is there. We need to make more of these things. So again, good and bad. <clears throat> but hopefully you can find the ones you're looking for. I would highly, highly recommend pre-ordering. I pre-ordered the uh, the light blue Cobra Commander from Pul from Hasbro Pulse. I pre-ordered the Pimp uh, Destro uh, Profit Director from Pulse. I pre-ordered two red ninjas from GameStop. I pre-ordered the dark blue Cobra Commander from Network, which is shipping in September, from what I was told. Um... But yeah, pre-order those guys because at least for now, the demand is so high, it's going to take Hasbro some time to to strategic, strategically, I'm so dry right now, strategically adjust the uh, number of figures that they produce to adequately meet the demand. They kind of have to get a good gauge right now. Obviously, demand, supply, they need to get it more here. You never want supply to outweigh demand. You always want it to be like right there where there's still a little bit less supply than the demand because when it's less than that, when the demand when the demand is higher than the supply, this is marketing right now, <laughs> when the supply is lower than the demand, then it creates the demand to rise. And then this rises. It's like a, it's one of those. Anyway. Uh, never F with a ninja, bro. Nemesis Enforcer. This is true. If you see ninja, just run. Big zag. Hope you don't get hit by a throwing star. Because ninjas, you don't want to mess with. Watch the movie Ninja Assassin. You'll know why you don't want to mess with a ninja. Uh, Vince Carter was my first NBA, favorite NBA player. Jordan is the GOAT, but Kobe is my all-time favorite NBA player, Toy Avenue says. Um, Vince Carter was awesome. One of the best dunkers ever. Um, Vince Carter was very, very good. Let's see here. Thoughts on DC. Oh, I already read that one. What's up with comments reposting? Uh, unless my comments are jumping down and then back up. My troopers are super elite because I... King Dingling says, my troopers are super elite because I can find zero in Illinois. I hope you find them, dude. And I hope you find uh, those troopers. Uh, Country Club says, and, and I can kind of, I think that they're going to go.
go the route of what they did with the aim soldier and the hydra soldier and the little 1495 uh cardboard box um redistribution repack for the cobra trooper with less weapons i think he's gonna be scaled down maybe come with like one gun but 1495 army build the frick out of this thing i think that's what they're gonna do with the cobra trooper that's just a guess i have no information on that but just knowing how many people are trying to army build the cobra trooper and how limited and hard to find it is right now i could see hasbro doing that and it'll probably be a Pulse exclusive. Uh, let's see here. Which large size classified Joe vehicle would you want them to do first? Oh, man, that'd be tough. Large sized Joe. So if they did like a HasLab, basically, because any vehicle they do in the six inch scale is going to be gigantic. Um, I think a Rattler would be pretty badass. And I think that it could be a manageable size where you don't have to like build an addition to your house just to display it. I think a Rattler would look really good. A Mobat, a Mauler, um, Devilfish, you know, all any of the smaller size vehicles would look good. A Fang, um, Claw Armor. There's a bunch of stuff they could do. But I don't know if they should go larger than like Sky Striker size. I think if you start getting into something bigger than that, it's unmanageable. There's no way to display it. But like Sky Striker, probably Rattler and smaller. That would be very, very cool. I got three minutes left, guys. And then I got to get some freaking water because I am I feel like I'm in a desert right now with how dry my mouth and throat are. I'm all in for Trouble Bubble. Absolutely. That would be very, very cool. Trouble Bubble by Night of Ren. So Bear Clements and Night of Ren said Trouble Bubble. Trouble Bubble. <laughs> Uh, Wicked Hunter says, I want Thunderbird. Knight of Rents is Mobat. Uh, Josh Uloff, did I pronounce that correctly? He says, Big E needs to be given the heavyweight belt. I was thinking the same thing. Finally gets a singles run. Big E was the man uh, in, uh, was it OVW? Um, he was a champ in OVW, I think. And I would love to see Big E with the title. And just have a, a, a good run. Uh, Knight of Renson, honestly, Hasbro... <clears throat> man, I'm getting dry. Hasbro would be stupid if they didn't do a 1495 Cobra Troopers. They'd sell like hotcakes. They would sell much better than the AIM Troopers and Hydra Troopers. I can tell you that. Uh, same thing if they did a Storm Trooper. If they did a scaled... Not a scaled down, but like less accessory Storm Trooper. Just a basic 1495 Storm Trooper with... One gun, not two. I mean, he only comes with two guns, but they could they could army build the frick out of that. 15 bucks, they'd sell a ton of them. Barrett Clements says, how weird awesome would a big E versus Fiend in a title run? Uh, that would be a, a good, that'd be a good matchup, I think. I would like to see that. Speaking of which, SmackDown is currently on, guys. So if you're a wrestling fan, uh, I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, so tune into SmackDown to watch live, but, uh, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for participating. Thank you for leaving comments in the chat. Thank you for giving thumbs up. I appreciate that. Um, uh, but I will, uh, I have a edited video coming your way on Patreon tomorrow on YouTube on Sunday. If I can get to my editing tonight, otherwise it'll be like Monday probably, but very, very soon. It's a, it was a fun video. Check that out. Um, what else guys? Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing this thing. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. We'll do another live stream soon. I like to do at least one a week. What's the Patreon? It's uh, patreon.com slash Cincy nerd. I got levels as low as like a buck, but you get the videos a day early and I do exclusive videos where I play copywritten music. So that's the most fun thing. I think if, if I, if I wasn't me and I <laughs> watched my channel, I would be a patron just to watch my exclusive toy hunt videos because a i can have tay tay in the video and not worry about kappa and she's a freaking smart aleck and she's hilarious same with p-dog i can do toy hunt videos and i play as much copyrighted music as i want i don't use the the royalty free electronic music in those it's all copyrighted music i played like nirvana in the last one um I forgot what else I played, but like, yeah. So there's a reason to be a patron, I guess. But thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. 
Um, I'll see you guys soon. Adios. Have a great weekend and uh, have fun collecting. <laughs>